Hey guys, it's uh, May e. Milo here, and I'm back with another introductory, or we're actually going to be working right now into our beginner acrylic lesson. So last week we focused on an introduction into it, so kind of like all the bits and pieces and the working parts of it, as well as all the supplies. So um, I've been kind of doing some notes in this book, and this is kind of what I talk about in last week's lesson. So in case you're just joining in, uh, this was just kind of the title page of my book. And so here was where we talked about the supplies. We talked about everything that you'll need to kind of get into painting along with me, as well as kind of the paint colors, additional supplies. So these are just kind of some fun notes. And this is what I kind of explained to people is at least you can do the notes. And then later on, when you're able to, you can um, do the lessons along on your own time. Uh, so then we got into talking about brushes and each one of them and what they're used for. I uh, won't get into that too much. And then we just talked about some other little practice lessons in here. Uh, we did a kind of like a talk about gesso and we did a little lesson about that. And we talked about paint. Paint was a pretty big lesson. So there was two videos for that. And then we did another little exercise, uh, this little exercise over here. And then we did dimension uh, this last lesson. And so that was explaining how to take something that is on a flat surface and make it look as though it has dimension. So it looks like it is actually a three dimensional object. Um, so we talked about that and we talked a little bit about paint transparency. So that was kind of where we ended the week off and we will get into other lessons as we go along as we talk about each one of them. But I always like to just, you know, after we learn so much, I wanna just have a fun lesson. Um, and I really kind of thought about what kind of uh, painting lesson I wanted to teach. And uh, when I first did my first ever paint night, uh, I was very super nervous, but this was the actual paint night that I had designed. And I actually painted the original in a book very similar to this. And so, um, this is kind of what I did for my notes and you can feel free to follow along if you wish. And um, I'm just gonna kind of explain what I did down here first before I get into the supplies is I painted this with either gesso or white paint, whichever you want, just this little section in here. And then I divided it into six sections because there will be six basic steps. And kind of the nice way about doing this is you're gonna paint in your book, but it's gonna give you opportunities to practice each one of these steps. Uh, so I practiced the background six times. Um, I practiced blocking in the main branch five times. You know, as you go through each step, it's gonna get progressively uh, less times you'll try it, but it is very good to just keep that, you know, practice motion going. And also if you do it in the book, it's very forgiving. So if you make a mistake, you can just, try again on the next page. All right, so I'm just gonna explain the steps of how we're gonna do um, the winter branch painting. Uh, so this was my very first paint night. It was, it's very near and dear to my heart. Um, it's framed, it's painting it probably will never sell. Um, so I'm just gonna explain what brushes you will need. So you will need your one inch wide brush. I don't know if you guys can see that, it was really drippy wet. So one inch wide brush number four round and you'll need a liner brush and you'll also need one more brush and that's your finger so as long as you have a finger and if you don't want to use your finger you can use q-tips or something like that a jar of water some clean water and don't forget to protect your surface and uh, then we will i will show you the colors that we will be using today and i have them laid out here as well so i just want to show you i have um, either one color or two colors that you can use depending on what you can find. So either you can use just turquoise and white, or if you can't find turquoise and white, you can use um, Windsor blue or Thalo blue and a primary yellow. Uh, of course, white, uh, some cad red or just a really primary red color or you know, if you have a really bright pinky red too, that'll be perfect. Or even it's just pink or purple, whatever color you want. It's for berries, so whatever color you imagine for berries. And then some black paint. 
so as I do for paint paints, I'm just gonna kind of explain the steps and then we'll get right into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint our black background. We're gonna use turquoise and white and we'll just kind of do this little halo effect and I'll explain how we do that. Uh, then we're going to paint in the main branch uh, and the, or I call this the main trunk or the main beam uh, or main branch. And then these are little beams that come off of it. And then we will do our uh, thinner branches off of each one of those main beams. And then after that, we'll add some of our berries. And then we will move on and we will add some highlight into our trees because this is just the blocking in stage. And then we will come back and we will add some snow on our berries and our tree. And I will tell you, it is really hard to um, do all of this in really tiny little areas, but it was really fun to just try and get it fit in. So, and it's really fun to kind of go back and, you know, at least go back and see your steps, you know, exactly how it should be. So um, we are just gonna get started. So in this first video, all we are going to be working on is the background. So we're gonna do, every time we have to dry something, I will stop the video. And uh, I need something to focus on here. I figured out that it does not like all white um, background. It doesn't have anything to focus on. Um, so we are going to, work on our background. Uh, we're gonna get that all blocked in. That will be one video. Uh, then we will do the next video, which will be our main beam and possibly our thinner branches, depending on time. And we'll just keep going on in each one of those videos until we get done. It should be approximately about six videos. So I hope you follow along each day. Uh, so that'll give you time to just le let it dry. It's gonna give my people who are OCD and perfectionists going to have to wait until the next step. So it's gonna be a little bit of a good patience game. Um, so here we go. So the first thing we're gonna do is I want you to uh, get your paint out. Um, I set it up on this palette just like this, but if you want to you know, set it up differently, you can. Um, just a little note about the color. Um, I'm gonna be using turquoise and white. You cannot find turquoise and white. We're gonna be using that Windsor blue and I'm gonna show you how to mix it. So you're gonna be using Windsor Blue and that primary yellow and white. So if this is if you can't find that. So you're gonna take a lot of yellow. So start out with the yellow first. Just gonna kind of make a bigger puddle over here. So we learn, we're gonna leave some of this yellow in case we need to ne mix it back. We want pure yellow, okay? I'm gonna pick up, just rinse my brush out. It's always good to rinse between mixing the two colors so that way you don't contaminate it. So let's pick up a little bit. Just mix it over here. So you want a kind of a green, but on the bluer side of green, okay? Now, if I was to put this right beside that turquoise, I'm just gonna take this turquoise and pull it out like that. And you can see how pretty dang close that is. So it's actually just a little bit more blue. Okay, and there we go, so that's probably quite a bit closer, there you go. So that is your turquoise. And then as you keep going along, you can just make a bigger puddle of it. Once you get the color and you know exactly what you're looking for, you just makes a bigger puddle of it. So we're gonna be adding quite a bit of white. So you will go in here and then you can just see as, as I add white, we're gonna get into more of that teal color. So you can see I just keep adding more white to it, okay? So that's how we are going to work, except I'm just gonna be using for the video, I'm just gonna be going straight to turquoise, okay? So get your big wide brush out of the water, squeeze out the extra water, and then just kind of tap it off. I have a little rag off to the side here, and if I take my brush out of the water and it's too damp, I'll just kind of wipe it off. So if uh, you see me go from over this way, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take quite a bit of white paint because we're gonna start white here and we're gonna get to dark out here. So I'm just gonna kind of use that color. I want a very light turquoise, almost white. Okay, and then we're just gonna start here. Just kind of make a little circle-ish, okay? And then just add a bit more in here. You just wanna shift the color just a little darker. Notice I'm just swiping my brush back and forth. My 
paintbrush was getting a little dry. So if you feel like your paintbrush is not picking up the paint or it's not moving it, chances are your paintbrush isn't wet enough. So go to the water, get out some of the water, go back to the paint. Okay, and then you're gonna notice it's going to blend quite a bit better. Okay, we're just gonna work around that circle. And I'm just kind of doing a light little brush stroke just like that. I just wanna mix the white area that I just put down and this dark area together. I don't wanna do some heavy brush strokes cause I might have to come back in here and blend again. Okay, so I'm just gonna do some good little brush strokes. I might have to go back in here with some more white to just kind of soften this back out. So it's a little bit of a happy dance. Let's add a little bit more white back here. Okay. Okay, then let's add a little bit more turquoise in. Okay. Okay, and if you see it's a little spotty right up in here, just uh, get some white paint. You can see I can just soften that out just by picking up a little bit of white paint. And I can just soften that hard edge and you can get this nice little halo. It's a really nice kind of soft blended look. Okay, add a little bit more darker color in there. You can see every time I'm just getting a little bit darker and a little bit darker and I'm not um, cleaning my brush out between because I'm keep on going darker but I need that white to kind of blend into the color that was previous. Now you can do this color or this background with any color you like. This is just the color I had for this particular painting. So if you wanted to do this in another color, that is perfectly fine. Just pick a color that would, um, you know, that would be very complement to the berry color that you pick. Okay, let's just get a little bit darker. I just needed a little bit more paint in here, so I'm just gonna pick up some more color. Okay, and you can see I just keep working the brush back and forth, but when I get to that color and it needs to blend out, I use a really soft hand. It's very soft. I go from pushing hard down like this to very soft like this. So instead of like that, it's more like that. And please don't paint on your hands. Do not recommend it. Paintbrush is getting a little dry again, so just pick up some water, go right back to that paint, and you can notice it moves that paint quite a bit better. So that paint feels sticky or gummy or like it's not moving, then it probably needs a bit more water on your brush. Okay, just a bit darker in this corner up in here. You can see I'm just working that color all the way out to the corner and that's got a little bit of a hard edge, so I'm just gonna soften that back up in there. Okay. When it comes to doing these corners, I just kind of block them in really quick with whatever paint, and then I can just take that pure turquoise paint into the corners and just kind of soften it out this way, right into there. Gets a lot faster once you get to the corners.
can even, if you need to get better access, rotate your canvas. Don't feel afraid to turn it. You can definitely do that. Let's go up to this corner and that's it. Let's finish this corner up and then we have to let that dry. Okay, so my perfectionists, I know who you are. You are out there. This is one of those things you have to learn when to drop the brush. This is just a background. You have to remember there's gonna be something on top of it so it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so, and remember we can turn this different ways if we want our painting this way, this way, this way, etc. You get to choose. So leave it there to dry and I'll see you in the next video.